Okay, good afternoon. Um, this is our webinar on um, building coops and runs for poultry. And I have Jenny Call with me from Garden Sphere, representing Garden Sphere, and I'm Janda from the Enviro House, which is in the video behind me. And we are going to start our webinar in a couple minutes. Um, for those of you who have not used um, Zoom before, we will have uh, an opportunity. You can put questions in the chat. Please use the ellipsis side and change that to everyone so everyone can see it and it will be recorded. And uh, <clears throat> if, uh, if you have other questions at the end, if there are only a few of us in here, we can raise hands and uh, we'll take questions verbally. So um, I think that's the basics of what we need to cover. We'll go through some things and then we'll have some information at the end of the presentation for you as well. So um, we'll get started and um, I'll let Jenny do some more introduction of herself and um, watch for future announcements about the Enviro House getting open sometime in April. Um, this recording, the, the webinar is being recorded and will be up on YouTube, probably not until, probably take more than a week because the, the media crew is really busy right now with some other city mm -hmm. uh, matters that they have to deal with first. So, Jenny, um, go ahead and introduce yourself and we will get started. Yeah, well, hello, welcome back. If you were here for the introduction to uh, chickens and ducks and welcome if you weren't. And um, I am Jenny Call and I am with Garden Sphere. And uh, today we're gonna be learning about coops and runs and designs and how to build them and how to secure them. Um, I am a local, from Pierce County. I grew up here. I, I am a native Pierce Countyan. Um, I grew up in Fife and I have a degree in sustainable agriculture. And I am also a classroom teacher here in Pierce County uh, Elementary School. So uh, I really enjoy sharing information about these things. And um, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to share, uh, go ahead and put that in the chat. I'll be checking that regularly. Um, and again, welcome this afternoon. It's a, it's a beautiful day out there today. I'm going to share my screen. All right. And two, there we go. All right. So, so today, again, we're building your coop and run. And uh, Garden Sphere's address, phone number, and email is down there if you have any questions or um, need anything. Um, we've got lots of good stuff. Um, and it's a, a dot biz, uh, not a dot com, just for clarification. Um, the chicken we are looking at right now is a barred rock, Plymouth barred rock. And they are super friendly and really wonderful. And uh, we'll see lots of more chickens throughout this whole thing. So some of the things that uh, you wanna think about when you are getting chickens and you are thinking about your run and your coop and like, what do you need? Um, the biggest, one of the, number one is how much space do you have? And how much space do you have dedicated to a coop and run? Um, will also determine how many chickens you're, you're gonna be getting. So you wanna think um, eight to 10 square feet per chicken in a run and two to four square feet inside of a coop. Um, and that does uh, for, for ducks as well. Um, what is your budget? Um, do you want to buy a pre-made? Do you want to build it yourself? Um, are you looking for a lot of bells and whistles, you know, like an automatic door opener or, um, you know, some people put uh, little flower planters on there so they can plant flowers to, for some beautification. Um, so what is your budget? How much are you willing to spend? How much can you spend on um, constructing your, your house, your coop and your run? If there's 
natural shade or if you're going to have to build an awning to allow for some shade in that space because um, they are going to need a little bit of shade uh, they can't be in the sun um, throughout the entire day especially in the summer um, they do uh, chickens tend to get a little overheated and so you want to provide um, a space where they can get some good shade um, will it be up in the air well, not technically not up in the air, it's on stilts, but <laughs> will it be elevated or will your coop be on the ground? Um, some things to think about, will you be moving your, your coop around, your house around? Um, we call those chicken tractors or, or enclosure tractors and you move them around and they mow your grass for you um, and fertilize all at the same time. Um, I, have you checked the rules for where you live? You know, like how close to the property line can you build? Are you only really allowed to build them on the front of the house, the back of the house? You can't build them in the front of the house and you can't build them on the side unless there's so many feet from the property line. Um, lots of different rules about that. And where will their food be stored? That's a big one because our, our famous little Norway rat, uh, he is a friendly little fellow and he <laughs> likes to get into chicken feed. So um, if you don't know where food will be stored, it's also an excellent time to think about that because you wanna put it somewhere where it won't be um, disturbed, eaten, um, any of those things. It won't go bad. It's not um, going to get waterlogged, things like that. So I'm going to pop into the chat there. All right. So um, I'm going to make sure to keep that chat open so that if you have any questions, I'll be checking it periodically. Here's our first question. Where do you plan to build your coop? Where are you going to build it? I don't have that up yet, just a second. Oh, that's okay. And if you haven't changed it, add your chat to everyone. It wasn't earlier. Yes, I did. Okay. I did change it. I realized that I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're gonna put it in the backyard, side or front yard. Do you have another location entirely for it? Um, not quite sure yet. Any unusual places you might be putting your coop? Looks good. It's not everybody, but we'll go ahead and um, end the poll unless, okay, here we go. We'll end the poll and then I'll share that. There you go. All right, a couple of you are making plans and you put it in the backyard. Great. All right. So step one, um, step one is figuring out your location. Really, 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 truly. Like, because if your backyard faces south or southwest, um, it is going to get a huge amount of sun and it's gonna get very, very hot. Um, and so you're gonna to have to account for that. If you're, if you're backyard, if you're thinking in the backyard, um, if your location that you're planning is, is facing north, you know, the, the, it's gonna get a lot of shade. So how are you gonna get more light into that space? Um, you know, is it a very narrow space for your location and you know how are you going to accommodate that like how big is your house going to be to accommodate a very narrow space so um so you know really thinking about the location is really really important some things to consider I've kind of already mentioned a few of these um how much light does it get during the day now um chickens in particular are very light sensitive the more light or the longer days in the daylight that they have, the longer that they're going to lay in the year. So you'll notice that in late fall through the winter, um, through our darkest days of the year, the chickens aren't laying eggs. They're going to molt, which means they're going to lose their feathers and they, um, they stop laying. Um, but you, you know, commercial, um, uh, chicken houses, they do light it. So they are laying almost continuously. So how much light do you have during the day? 
Is there a natural cover or you have to build something? Um, is there enough space? You know, do you really have enough space for the amount of chickens that you're potentially getting? Are you going to have to get fewer chickens because of the space limitations? Um, can you get to the coop easily? Now that is huge because accessibility is everything. If, if it becomes a chore or is difficult to get to, the less likely you are to go back there, you know, into your coop space. Um, and then can you see the coop from your house? Um, I find that really beneficial. Um, from our back, back window in the kitchen, I can see all of the chickens um, and from the bedroom windows, I can see the ducks and, and our goose. So I find that really beneficial when you hear something really strange, something in out of the ordinary noise. Um, you can take a quick peek and see if it's serious or if it's just the chickens, uh, chickens being chickens, you know? So these are, these are some things to consider, um, really think about before you build, okay? Check the chat really quick. Give it a look-see, there we go. Um, here are a couple of different designs. So both of them are located on the ground. Neither of these are elevated, but there are some things I want to point out. Now in the curved, the curved coop, um, you notice it's quite fancy actually. It's not terribly difficult to make, um, but maybe a little bit time consuming. Um, you'll notice that the nesting boxes in this coop, clearly this, this coop is for a very large amount of chickens. And there are lots of um, um, nesting boxes to accommodate the chickens. Oops, uh, oh goodness gracious. Um, to accommodate the chickens and, and accommodate, um, you know, maybe their preference for a, a real particular um, nesting box. Um, it's open. Um, you can see that they do have a hanging feeder in there um, and it's lit. So it doesn't have a lot of natural light inside that coop, but you can see it has a very large open door that lets the natural light in there, but it also allows for uh, a lighted space, um, you know, when it, we start getting towards nightfall. It's quite a nice design. Um, and you also see that there are, are pine shavings down on the bottom and there are lips. So it's holding those pine shavings and so they're not just going out into the run. Um, something to note on this coop here is that it is enclosed with that hardware cloth. Now that is really important to keep out predators. It's one of the best ways to do that. Um, our traditional chicken wire is very easy for rats uh, to bite through, to chew through, and it's also very easy for raccoons to pull apart. Um, so uh, you'll see the welded, welded wire on the exterior fencing here, and then you also see the um, the hardware, hardware cloth here where they are going to be locked up at night and protected from predators during the evening hours. This is an elevated uh, coop as well. So you can see this ramp is going to go up, 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 up to the top of that coop and they sleep and nest at the top and then they can come down and run out into their run. Um, it's a, it's a nice, nice design. Some materials that you're going to need when you're thinking about building your coop is you're going to need a plan, you know, how many square feet do you need? Um, maybe how many roosting bars are you going to need? Um, you know, I, I, do you want a window there uh, where you want in your coop? Do you want uh, a, a planter box? Do you want um, a couple of different doors? Uh, so one of my coops actually has a main door and then it has the sides flip up. So it's very easy to clean. Um, so you want to kind of come up with a plan, sketch it out a little, you know, make it make get an idea. Um, you're going to need hardware cloth for sure as, as a, a small as an eighth of an inch uh, square or a quarter inch hardware cloth. Um, both are fantastic. Anything bigger than that, um, you're going to find that um, rats can get through uh, holes that are as big as a quarter. And so um, anything bigger than that, the rats can squeeze through that. They're pretty, pretty wily little critters. Um, hinges, latches uh, for your closures and doors. Uh, you're going to need a wood, clearly. Um, there are lots of reclaimed wood. Uh, I, we've got um, quite a few different places you can get reclaimed wood. I'm um, sometimes on uh, uh, get free to, you know, the free on online things um, that are out there. People are getting rid of old wood, you know, that are perfectly fine to build with, but maybe they don't want anymore. 
Um, you can do that. Uh, lots of screws, <laughs> different lengths for different, you know, um, thicknesses of wood. Um, but you always have that option of of, of getting a pre-built coop as well. Um, now, some of the pre-built coops um, are not built in a way that that coop will be around for the long term. Some of them are, are done with quite flimsy materials. So um, you really want to make sure if you're getting a pre-built coop that it is a solid structure that will last a long time. Um, uh, the coop, one of the coops uh, that we built when I was living in the north end of Tacoma, um, it, it is been now 15 years and it is fantastic. It's an elevated coop. I'll have a picture of it later on. Um, and so, you know, you really want to build for longevity because you don't want to have to be building and repairing a coop um, every couple of years or purchasing a coop every couple of years. To, not to mention, check that chat one more time. All right. It looks like we're looking good. All right. So hardware cloth, um, it comes in rolls of different lengths. You can get different widths as well. Um, so you might have to do a little bit of, of overlap depending on how much you need, um, but um, it, it is super sturdy stuff. Um, and it's, it's, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, the latch that I recommend for any kind of coop or, or house or run, is this a hook and eye latch with the spring? Um, raccoons cannot open them. Raccoons can open your standard latch. Um, it can open the, um, the pin. So you push it up and slide it. They can open those very easily. Um, they can also um, they can also open the flip and turns. Um, these, they can't pull, push, and um, unlatch. Um, so that is, that's one of the, the, in the closures, um, latch closures that um, has been really successful um, as far as keeping raccoons from opening up the doors. Um, you can see here that the hardware cloth was not used on this particular coop. It is um, the uh, welded fencing. However, rats and other smaller mammals can get through that very easily. So um, you really do need to use that, um, that hardware cloth. All right, our second poll, what type of coop would you like to build? What kind of ideas do you have um, kind of ruminating inside of your head? You know, do you want an A-frame elevated? Do you want it to be able to move around? Do you want it on the ground level? Do you want to walk into it? Do you want to be able to reach in and be able to get like 75% across your coop um, from different angles? The folks that were in here this morning um, had answered that, but you may want to go ahead and answer it again. You might have changed your mind since morning. Um, so Great. I think we have just about everybody here. So I'm going to end the poll and share it. Um, if you had um, combinations or other comments on that, put them in the chat and Jenny can answer those. Okay, thanks. All right, there are the results. Okay, so elevated, reach in for sure. The, the coop, I, 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 we've had the longest. Um, I really do like that it is elevated, but it also has the chicken door itself, but then the actual walls on two of the sides. Um, flip up so it's very easy to clean and I can reach in and do anything so any of these combinations is great it's really good all right so here are some of those oh, pops up here are some of those styles so um this is clearly on the ground but it also has the nesting boxes are right here the main coop is right here it's a walk-in style I really like that. And if I had the time and patience um, to build something like that, I certainly would. I do like it a lot because it's it's right kind of in the middle of their garden. Um, easy to clean out. You know, it's got all the all the right components. Um, here is an elevated. So it has two different ways for the chickens to get out. Um, the nesting boxes are right here. 
And here is a run. You can see they come down the ramp here. Inside are the, um, the roosting bars as well. Now I know that this lid pops up so you can get the eggs really easily. And you can also walk right in there. It's a little low, but I know that that, that is accessible. And I'm almost certain this type here, you can pull out the bottom for easy cleaning. This is a Rhode Island Red saying hi to us. Hey, how you doing? I'm a Rhode Island Red. Now, um, this house is at ground level. However, it is, it is um, enclosed on the bottom. So there's no, it's not on the dirt here, but the run is actually on the bottom. And this is a very secure house. You can see how they're using the clear corrugated on top. So they get natural light inside and in the run. And what that also does is it protects the chickens from any kind of um, rain, snow, and protects and covers the food from any contaminants that might be in the air or from other animals coming in. I um, are the our larger uh, house, chicken house, it's more of a house than a coop, um, is in this design. And actually ours is um, a 20 by 16. And it has, I use, we use the corrugated clear as the roof so they get daylight uh, in there. And um, it actually has the awning, awning extends uh, another eight feet out. Um, so it's very protected space. Um, I really enjoy that for larger flocks. Um, this A-frame is a movable A-frame. Um, you can see it is enclosed entirely on both sides. Now, this is a different A-frame than one I showed this morning. This one is much better for long-term and for shelter. Um, so they're gonna lay their eggs inside here. And then they have, there's, there's an actual electrical fencing here electrified fencing. Um, and then that you can actually purchase. It, it comes in a hundred foot long um, electrical fencing goes all the way around and you uh, use a, a, just a battery um, to charge it. And that is actually very effective if you have quite a large area and you kind of want to move your chickens around. Um, but you can see also it has venting, you know, making sure that there's good airflow in that. These are really great examples. Here is some examples from my farm. Um, and so you can see I've got my nesting boxes. They kind of stack on each other and they all, they all just, you know, sometimes they're all using this one. Sometimes they're all using this one. Sometimes they're, all, I mean, they use two of them, maybe all four are you being used at one time. Um, they're, they're, they're pretty funny. And then this is, this is our um, um, larger, um, chicken house. That's that 16. It's 20 by 20 by four, but it is uh, four by 16 is the coop and the four by four on the end is for my tack room where we keep all the feed and we keep the straw and the bedding and everything else that we need for all the rest of our animals. And so um, they have their roosting bars. You see the clear corrugated gives them nice, nice light throughout the day. And this, this is that back end. This is the other end where the nesting boxes are. And um, I use a square um, roosting bars. Now, the reason that you would want to use square roosting bars is because um, if you use the round ones, the chickens are gripping all of the time, the entire time they are roosting, getting ready to, you know, all, all evening, once they go to roost, they're just gripping, gripping, gripping. Um, and what that can do is that can cause a lot of strain. Um, it can cause a lot of joint issues. Um, and they can get like this perma claw foot um, because of that strain. Um, and so I like to use flat roosting bars uh, because then what they're doing is they're just resting their feet on it. They're not having to grip anything. They could just kind of rest and maybe the tips just do a little 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 grab because they, they need to stay steady or something, but they just rest there. It allows their entire foot to relax while they're roosting. Um, yes, here are my, my blue splash and here is their chicken door here. Okay. And you can see there, they're all heading in, all heading in for the night, but this is, it is a little bit elevated on the ground, uh, from the ground. It's up on blocks. And uh, one of the blocks is, uh, right here, see cedar siding on the outside, uh, but plywood on the inside and it is double insulated. Um, what that does is that provides, uh, so it has the main out wall and, and, um, all the, all the, 
all the bones, I like to call them the bones, little beams in the middle. Um, but it also is double and we insulated it because um, I had noticed uh, before we had built this, I had noticed that our temperatures were dropping um, it, very, very cold inside that coop because of the body heat of the chickens it doesn't ever get below freezing inside. So I'll bring in their water and their food and everything will go inside and I'll have no freezing issues because it is double. Um, and you can see that um, if you do build a ramp, you are gonna need to have um, foot catches there uh, for, your, for your chickens. Here's that latch that I was talking about. And here is a different coop that we have. Um, and it's got the slanted roof. We've got uh, this one has uh, two windows on either side and two doors. So this is one of the doors and it has a slider that you can see the opening is right there through that window, a sliding door as well. Um, and this is uh, also double insulated. And um, it is actually one that does stay on the ground, but it has um, lifts on it as well. So this is that latch in action right here. And you really only need one. And that works great. We've got some hinges and things going on. And always ventilation, lots of ventilation happening. Okay, so this is just some examples from my own, my own house. Uh, you can see our rooster right there, sitting with all the ladies. Now, when you're thinking about your coop, I did talk a little bit about municipalities. So every single city has different rules about the property line, how close you can be, how many chickens you can have. Um, um, and if you can have a rooster, um, I am, I'm in uh, the county, so I can have roosters and that's not a problem. Um, but most, um, like in Tacoma, um, roosters are a no-no. So you really have to, have to check on that um, before you build. Um, you know, just kind of stay in those confines of the rules there. Um, here are some books that I really enjoy. Um, I have these books and I, I really like them um, because A, they're interesting. They've got great pictures, um, but they have some interesting designs too, some good ideas. You can mix and match some of these ideas. Um, this, the free range chicken garden, is probably one of my absolute favorites because not only does it have great information about building, it's got plans, all of that, but the visuals are excellent. So you can really see all of it in action. Um, chicken Coops is your standard chicken coop book. Um, reinventing the chicken coop has some very creative ways. Um, you can see here the nesting boxes in this one. It's very creative, like it's very visually appealing, right? Um, this is a small pamphlet, but it has some very traditional designs that are very effective. And um, Hentopia is kind of a fun one, uh, using lots of recycled materials to make your coop. And this is just a great overall book for as many building projects as you'd like to do, uh, the Backyard Homestead Building Project um, uh, projects. It's great information and lots of different building projects and some that you could meld into your, your own practice. Um, and always, uh, if you have any questions or concerns uh, or any needs, um, you can always ask anybody at Garden Sphere and yeah, we're all really ready to help you out. Uh, I'm gonna check the chat, check, uh, check the chat very quick. Uh, I'm trying to add the books that I have on my list. I don't know if I have everything that you have, um, but um, yeah, those are the books. If not, check back for the video um, when it's posted. Mm -hmm. Um, probably in another week because it is recorded and it will be on the city's YouTube channel. Yeah. If you want me to email you this so you don't have to take it off in the chat, if you want me to email you the list of resources I'm putting in here um, or the uh, list of um, chicks that you can get, the different ones that Jenny shared this morning, send me an email to ehouse at cityoftacoma.org and I can uh, send you those attachments. Yeah, um, sounds good. Um, if you have any questions um, and you don't want to use the chat, we have few enough people in here that 
you can raise your hand and um, I can unmute you and uh, Jenny can answer live if we need to. There we go. Well, any questions? I don't see any, don't see any raised hands. Yeah. I don't see any questions. So I've just got a couple more of these things I'm putting in here. Um, I will also add the link. Um, it is in other webinars. Um, if you go to city of Tacoma dot, no, if you go to YouTube dot com forward slash Tacoma or forward slash EnviroHouse, um, you will get to the city's YouTube channel and then just search on um, the playlist for our uh, webinars and our how-to videos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then, uh, Nancy says she's decided that she's like she likes the walk-in better. Um, you know, I I I like my older coop, the one that has the sides that flip up, um, but I really like my chicken house because I there's a larger door on the opposite end of that chicken chicken door. And it's a full door and opens right up so I can walk right in, um, you know, clean it out really, you know, pretty quickly. It takes me about a half hour to clean that one out because I have so much to take out of it. But uh, I can walk right in and I can count the chickens. I can touch the chickens. I can, you know, nothing's, you know, hitting me on the head. Nothing. I don't have to reach in. Um, I really do like it. So, <laughs> so if you can, if you can get a something that you can walk into um, and that's easier for you, I think that's uh it, it is nice. It's nice to have a walk in. The other thing that I would throw out is um, if if you didn't pick this up from previous webinars, um, you can borrow tools if you're going to build your own coop. Um, check out the Tacoma Tool Library if you don't have all the tools that you need. Yeah. And um, they are open now. They were closed for their winter hours, but I believe they're reopened in March. Um, and this is me. And I think that's probably everything, unless somebody's got yeah. questions. Coming up on the 19th, we will be doing yard waste composting. Mm -hmm. And then later in April, we will be doing worm bin composting. And Jenny will be back with us on March 26th about spring gardens, um, what to plant now, how to get your beds ready, um, with lots of good information about planting. So look forward to seeing you again. You can find all the workshops and some of the recorded ones on cityoftacoma.org forward slash workshops, which will take you to the Embarrow House webpage. Thank you all for attending and thank you, Jenny, and I will see you in a couple weeks. Yeah, thank you for coming. Okay, bye right. everyone. Bye.